Hello and welcome. <laughs> this is going to be a little bit of a different kind of content. It's just going to be me talking and sharing about my experience through my yoga teacher training that I did in August here in Bali. And I guess it's more of a video journal, more than the usual light language activations or monthly energy updates. So yeah, I really just wanted to come up here to share my experience, my perspective, my opinions on many things that has been shown to me in the three weeks in training. So pardon me if I'm sweating <laughs> through this video because um, the air condition is not really working well and this room that I'm in is actually facing the west so when the sun sets it gets really heated up as you can see it's made of wood so <laughs> it traps a lot of heat and yeah just don't mind me it looks a little bit glowy and i kind of like the vibe but if you see sweat trickling down <laughs> just try to ignore that and yeah enjoy this um however long ramble it's gonna be so a couple of months ago before i actually booked my trip to bali again <laughs> um I got the message to do this specific 200 hour yoga teacher training with a specific school um, in August. And I had two options. I had the online option um, and I had the physical option. And the online option was great for me. It was kind of like the best of both worlds because I really felt the message for me was that this yoga teacher training is really for me. Um, not so much to be a yoga teacher, not so much to be certified, but more so an understanding of this tradition, this lineage, and what yoga really is. So I really had a lot of resistance, <laughs> to be very honest, when I first um, received the message to do a yoga teacher training because I there was never once that I desired to be a yoga teacher. <laughs> and I guess because of how the yoga world is right now that very much is geared towards this whole fitness thing. Um, is not what yoga is about and I think that part of it really repelled me to do a yoga teacher training or to even desire to be a yoga teacher so when I received the message I was like what the heck is going on <laughs> like why am I being guided to do a yoga teacher training and the message very specifically is no you don't do the online one even though you can do it at your own time and you don't get the certificate which I don't really care about it anyway um, but you need to do it physically and I was like well okay my ego well my lower mind was really resisting it but a part of me knew that this would benefit my um, work and my service to the world to you so i took on and i followed this um, message and i booked my flight to bali came here um, and took the yoga teacher training for three weeks it was interesting to see how it brought up a lot of triggers. Like it brought up a lot of things that um, was really triggering to me that was coming up to be sort of burned away by the sacred fire. So the whole process was a very energetic and a very, very 
uh, physical one as well. We moved through uh, the moon, which is to stabilize the vessel, to stabilize the nervous system. And then we moved through the sun practices, which is to open up our vessel to be more sensitive to prana, to energy. And um, then we moved to the fire, which really is the culmination of the practice. It's really why um, Hatha yogis practice Hatha yoga is to work with the sacred fire um, in our practice every day. It is almost like a sacred inner fire ceremony where we stoke the fire in the navel, in the third chakra, in the Manipura chakra, which in current terms it's called the solar plexus chakra to burn through the lower mind to burn through the limiting beliefs to burn through the fears so that we open ourselves up to the divine connection so really yoga is not about <laughs> vinyasa yoga is not about the sun salutations yoga is not about handstands and uh, back bends and flexibility. This is very much the capitalized yoga in the fitness industry. And I'm not saying that this is bad. It has its place, but it's not what traditional yoga, it's not what authentic yoga, it's not what the yogis practice yoga for. It's not for fitness. The goal is to connect. The goal is to meditate and connect with the divine, to connect with the one, to connect with the source, to connect with God, whatever you want to call it. The poses, the asanas, the warrior threes, <laughs> the warrior ones, warrior twos, and forward folds and back bends, each of the pose categories actually influence how the energy flows in our body. So for example, forward folds actually help to stabilize the mind, stabilize the energy. It helps to ground. So the energy flow is actually downward moving. It helps with releasing. It helps with letting go. Each of these pose categories have very specific energetic imprints and they are put into a sequence to prepare the body for a specific um, outcome. So let's say it's to uh, ground the mind, it's to stabilize the nervous system, then we work with specific asanas that really the poses are just a preparation for the body and then we move through the breath work which is the preparation for the breath and then through the breath stabilize the mind so that we can meditate with a calm, stable mind and reach high states of uh, samadhi. Samadhi really is, in very simple terms, is just enlightenment or that state of meditation where you connect with just the oneness of it all. This profound connection that really can't be described with words. It can only be experienced. If you, if you have experienced it before, you know what I'm talking about. So yoga, really these poses and breath work comes together in, in a sequence, in a traditional class to prepare the energetic body, the physical body to go into deep states of meditation so that we connect with our higher self, we connect with the truth, we connect with the source. So really that's what um, yoga is about. What Yoga, why yoga is traditionally practiced, this is what it's all about. Throughout the whole three weeks, it was almost like a flashback deja vu moment for me where I saw myself sitting in the classroom before in the very same setting. It's almost like my physical body was catching up, but energetically I've already experienced it. A lot of the things, a lot of the teachings that were passed down to us, the philosophy, was very much in, in line with what I have been channeling. This new world that, you know, the new age spiritual community is channeling, including me, right? I've been talking about this, this golden timeline, this new world that's coming through 
really it's already here and, and it's a frequency that we're tapping into and we are um, tuning our frequencies and shifting our own frequencies to match that frequency so that we can live that reality. In this whole cycle of time, um, in, in the teaching, uh, we are in the Kali Yuga, towards the end of Kali Yuga, which is the darkness period, and we're coming out of it and into the dawn of light. So it's sort of um, a couple thousands of years of the Kali Yuga timeline that we're transitioning out of and into the dawn of the light age, um, into the dawn of the new world. So in these ancient texts, these uh, sages have already tapped into it, uh, which is why this, I would call this actually a technology. Like I was in, in the classroom one day and I was listening to my teacher talk and I suddenly saw this vision of um, myself, but I was observing it almost like a third person and I wasn't in this, this Jamie's body. I was in some kind of an ancient Egyptian lady's body. I was in the pyramid and I was flowing through a series of asanas and I knew that that lady that I was witnessing was in a half trance state and she didn't know exactly what she was doing that she didn't know that that was yoga but she allowed her body to just move in a half trance state and it was actually uh, the yoga poses like revolved um, triangle pose um, pyramid pose and warrior three and white leg forward fold like she was moving through these poses and the words that I heard was your body, these movements, is the technology. Your breath is the technology. Your consciousness is the technology. It, everything is not outside of you, it is within you. And with this physical body, it is so important to realize that we need this, this physical body in order to uh, reconnect back with the divine, to reconnect back with source. We can't bypass this physical reality, we can't bypass this body because there is a very specific reason why we even descended <laughs> into this physical body and it is actually in um, the yogic text, it's called the Samkhya map, whereby it, it shows us the densification of um, energy from the very high states, the very subtle realms, stages by stages into the gunas, into the elements, and then into our doshas, in Ayurvedic, the doshas, the vata, pitta, and kapha, and then more densification into the physical body. So if you think about it, it's like water that moves from um, a gaseous state the moisture in the air into uh, physical like liquid form into rain and then when it's cold enough it becomes ice so from the gaseous state to the liquid state to the solid state that is exactly how we came in it's from source the very very intention the very reason why our souls decided to come into this body, there is a very specific um, reason, and that is the divine blueprint, that is our dharma. And then through that, the densification, more of that subtle energy into almost like a liquid state where it's kind of flowy, it's still malleable, and then um, more densification into the solid state. So this whole process shows us that if we would want to connect back to source, which is the subtle realms, and learn how to master the energy world, which really is 99% of reality, because if you look at an atom, 99% of an atom is actually just empty space. And only 1% of it, and this is the rounded up number, only 1% is actually less, but rounded up 1% is solid state. Meaning that what we see, what we see, our hands, our body, the, the bed, uh, the table, 
the computer, the TV, the phone, is only 1% of our reality. And 99% is actually things that we can't see. But it is there. It is in the energetic world. It is in the subtle uh, realms. If we want to, to master our life, whether it's master our relationships with people, with money, um, anything, we need to understand the energetic world first and how it really is what it is. A lot of these physical things are simply just representations, are simply physical manifestations of the subtle realms. In order to connect back and, and move up the ladder, we have to work with the physical body and then the energetic body and then tap into the higher states of, of consciousness. So the way we descend from subtle to dense to even denser, from gas to liquid to solid, this is an example. So in order to connect back, we got to reverse the process and that's really what a, a yoga sequence done correctly and, and um, thoughtfully is is doing it is working with the physical body the solid state our bodies solid state and then working with the breath which is the subtle energetics calming the mind with the breath calming the nervous system and then through that we access the higher states of consciousness so moving up the ladder just like how we descend it into this body we use the body to move back up and connect with the divine to connect with our higher self to connect with creation message that i received in, in in the weeks of processing and integrating was that really we we use this body to help us to to remember we use this physical reality to help us to remember it's not about bypassing it it's not about ditching this body because we came here for a specific reason we call that the mahad which is the very reason why you're uh, you even descended into this physical body in the first place. You can call it Dharma, you can call it your purpose. There is a very specific, authentic blueprint of it. But through the densification and through uh, upbringing, through you know, things that we take on from the world, we plaster on these different templates, we plaster on these different uh, realities that we think we want, that we're being told that we're supposed to have, and then like this divine blueprint has, is always there, but we just got distracted by all of these noise around us. And, you know, through the process of yoga, it's clearing that out <laughs> and accessing your divine blueprint. Everything has a spark of divinity, the purest and highest fractal of source energy in everything, everything. Of course, nature has a lot of it, but in everything, even the people who have hurt you, even the um, challenges, even the tests, even the things that you really dislike and you really hate, because it's, it's, it's made, we all come from the same place, it's source. So there's a spark of the purest essence of source energy that is in everything and through the physical through the mundane it is an invitation to see the challenges to see the um boring things in life as a spiritual practice like when you're moving through a really hard time in your life instead of you know, questioning why is this happening to you and thinking it as a punishment. There's always a higher purpose to everything. There is always, through these, these challenges, through these things that you don't like, people that you don't like, situations, relationships, there is always a way to see through it, pierce through the physical, pierce through the surface and see the deeper meaning, connect with the deeper energetics of it. And there's always an essence that you can tap into, that you can transmute the heaviness, you can transmute the darkness and 
and connect with this non-dual nature <laughs> of everything. Um, in the process, there really uh, was a lot of stuff coming up in terms of this uh, light language thing that I've been doing and there were a lot of moments of self-doubt and a lot of moments of the illusion of separation. That, um, there was a part of me that really was... I had to release the fear of losing this part of me, which doesn't make any sense when I think back because the everything is so complementary. A part of me knew it didn't make sense for me to doubt this transmission that I'm sharing with the world. But a part of me was like, this is not it. And almost gripping onto this channel that I built. And I had to sort of release everything and I had to allow the sacred fire to burn through. And I remember very vividly this one experience that um, I was sitting in, in the fire, I was meditating in the heart. We were being guided to meditate um, on the sacred fire in the heart. And then this fire expanded from my heart to my entire body. And it's nothing like what I imagined fire to be. And, you know, I've always received the message that uh, fire will, will not burn what's true to you. It will only burn what is inauthentic to you. It will not touch the divine essence of you. So whatever it burns away is really the things or are really the things that, that are not aligned with you to begin with anyway. So it's burning it away, but it will never burn away the things that are divinely you, your divine essence. So I sort of saw myself let go of everything and, and I kind of gave myself the permission to be like, you know, if you want to burn this away, burn it away. Because I know that wh however my work transforms, the intention is always to, to bring back the truth, to guide people back home to themselves and in whatever way that it physically manifests itself is just a mode of delivery. So it could be light language, it could be, um, I don't know, readings, it could be <laughs> yoga, it could be something completely different, but the message that's coming through, I know I'll always be sort of doing videos like this, channeling, I know it will always come through me and this, this essence will always come through me. It is more the energetic transmission through the modality more than the words that are coming through my mouth, more than the, um, the physical thing that I'm doing. It's beyond that, it's the energetic transmission. So when I allow that, when I said, okay, burn that away if this is not mine and burn that away if it's meant to be released, I was being shown the truth, which is that, hey, this light language thing is really just energy, which is what I've been saying always anyway. It's what I've been saying in this light language program that I um, recently launched. It's the way that we express energy. And light language can have a really um, misunderstood way and people usually get into light language through like galactic language, like maybe Pleiadian activation or Octorian language and then they come through and they get more intrigued and more intrigued and then it's almost like, oh, I want to learn this language because it's cool, it's the new age thing. But really, again, it's sort of a doorway for people to come in, just like um, religion is as well. I see it as all of these things are simply just uh, doorways for people to enter this building of truth and in this circular building of truth are different doors to enter. So people can enter through a specific religion, people can enter through um, a specific modality, people can enter through light language, Reiki, Akashic Records, for me it was 
<laughs> the new age manifestation thing and all these are just opportunities for us to to take that step forward that pulls us in because it it piques our interest and then all these different route will lead to the same thing in the middle of this building which is the truth of it all which is that all of this is just is just this physical need to separate because we are individualized and we have individual desires and individual interests and different things that um, attract us to different stuff, different people. So we need all these different ways, gods, um, beliefs, philosophies to guide us and to sort of open the door for us to then go on this journey of exploration and get to the truth, which is that separation is an illusion. All this is simply just a way for us to connect back to what is, to connect back within and realize that eh, it's all one and the same and that we all have it within us. But this is also not to say that all these different modalities and religion is useless and we shouldn't be doing it. No, because it serves a purpose. It works with our physical body, just like how the poses, how the asanas do. We can't skip the asanas and just go straight to meditation because these asanas work with the body, work with the energy and then assist us to get into deeper states of meditation. So when I realized this, I, I realized that actually this light language thing didn't burn away it's here and i mean i don't know where it's gonna go moving forward i will still be transmitting i'll still be channeling for as long as it feels aligned because at the end of the day it's just a transmission of energy and i'm translating it in through my vessel through that the sound vibration transmits that energy to you transmits that message to you and whether i'm speaking english or whether i'm speaking this 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 is not even a language it's just a transmission of energy really everybody has a different way of transmitting this so everybody has a different um language in a sense each of us have our own expression of language which is really what I keep saying in, in the light language um, program, in the light language course, even the sages, the, the gurus, the teachers from thousands of years ago, they were able to tap into this, which shows that this information is out there. I mean, out there as in prior to it being written down in books, it is in the energetic field. And now these rise of channelers that are channeling and tapping into this field of consciousness, tapping into this field of information and channeling through this information, it's like they're almost like talking about the same thing. And it just shows that it is accessible to anyone. It is out there. It's out there for the genuine seekers. It's out there. Um, for everybody. And the reason why some people aren't able to connect, why some people are able to connect, is not because they're built different, that they have specific gifts. Like, of course, that's maybe just 20% or 30% of the equation, but 70% of it is really your attunement to energy. It's really your um, sensitivity to energy, which is what yoga is about also is and breath work and like meditation this road map of connecting to the divine is to work with this vessel that we have to be more sensitive to energy and when we're more sensitive when we keep practicing and become more sensitive to these energetic shifts to the subtle energetics then that is when we receive our downloads we receive downloads whether it's for yourself or for someone else or for the masses so everybody has this innate <laughs> ability and it is all about our sensitivity to energy um, which is we're so severely disconnected with it because of the way that the world is we're taught to live all these different noises like so many things that are disconnecting us 
to the inner voice that's within us. So, yeah. It's getting really dark <laughs> right now. I've talked from when the sun is up till when the sun is setting. I hope you enjoyed this little ramble. Um, I am considering to share maybe some practices. It's not going to turn into a fitness channel or a yoga channel, don't worry. I'll still be transmitting um, light language transmissions. I will still be doing these monthly energetic updates. I love just being in the space and receiving and just sharing. When I re-listen to them, it always is so beautiful to just receive this energy just coming through me. And I just know that, oh, this is not Jamie, Jamie. This is actually something else. It's her higher self. This is something that she's connecting to. And it makes, it's so wise and it makes so much sense. And I'm like, hmm, sometimes I look at myself and I'm like, this is actually not me. And I really like this information that's coming through. It, it, it teaches me a lot as well. Yeah, so these sequences that I potentially might share is going to be for specific purposes. One that I'm moving through right now for the next 40 days is a moon practice to calm and stabilize the mind to ground in a lot of the changes that I'm, um, transitions and shifts that I'm experiencing in my life right now. A lot of stuff that's moving to ground, to stabilize and to let go of a lot of the old stuff that I'm being guided to let go of. Let's see where this all goes. So thank you so much for being with me and for chilling and receiving this. Um, and I'll see you soon in the next video.